Good morning and welcome to March's ITS Connect session. Today we're going to talk about telepresence and what the features are that we have on campus for telepresence that you can use for various meetings, events, um, or other things that you can think of um, in your own <clears throat> department. My name is Jennifer Laudiana and I am the Education and Training Specialist for ITS. Uh, telepresence, as defined in Wikipedia, is a technology that allows a person to feel like they are present. It's very life-size oriented. It allows you to feel like you're talking across the table from someone else, but they could be thousands of miles away. As part of our video conferencing services, we do offer telepresence. It is very high quality, feels like you're in the same room. Uh, you can use it across campus, you can use it across the world, you can use it across the United States. However, uh, you need to use the telepresence. So why would you use it? Uh, some examples I have listed, it eliminates the need for travel. So if you are on a committee that has people from all over uh, the different states and you're working on a conference or a program, you can actually meet using telepresence either one-to-one -one, or you could meet with all of you from different places, however you need to meet. It also it eliminates the concept of having to have everyone travel to one location. It enables collaboration across campus or across the globe. It allows body language to be seen. Uh, one nice thing, unlike Connect, where you can see me in the top uh, left there, very small, on telepresence, you actually will see people in a life-size version. And it actually will allow you to converse if you have multiple people uh, dialed into the telepresence that will actually switch from person to person. And we'll talk about that. There are different options for that as well. It's more natural. If you've dialed into a bridge number and just heard audio, uh, you can understand how you might hear pauses, you might misinterpret a tone of voice, whereas in telepresence or video conferencing, you can actually see the person's facial expressions. As I'm talking with my hands, you would see their uh, physical expression as well. You would know that if they pause, they were taking notes or things like that. Um, everyone appears life-size, which I mentioned before, and we'll be able to see that in an example that I'm going to show you later in the presentation. So some examples of how you can use it. Uh, departments have used it to interview candidates um, and do screening interviews or, or interviews for faculty members across the United States. You can collaborate with other universities. You can collaborate um, across campus, as I said, within the state, out of the state, within Cleveland um, and other cities. You can conduct lectures with visiting faculty, which is a nice thing if you have a nice size class, small class, and you want them to see this person lecture, they could go to the telepresence and it would be like they are standing in front of the classroom and then they are be able to see all of the students that are in the class as well when they are teaching and questions can be asked, you can raise your hand, just like you would in a classroom lecture situation. You can also use it on campus, so if you need to, um, you can use it if part of your meeting group is on the one side of campus and the other group is on the opposite side of campus and you need to meet uh, to save time with parking and getting where you need to be. You could also use telepresence and video conferencing options to do your meetings as well. And I'm sure there are many more opportunities that you may think of that you can use in your work or in your department. So where can you use it? I'm going to talk about some locations that we have on campus. I'm going to focus today on the Cisco Telepresence Systems, or for short, CTS, and where those are located and some of the features that they have. Um, and then I'll talk about some tips and tricks and we'll show a video so that you can actually see telepresence in action and how you set that up and how that works. The first is in Calvin Smith Library, room LL06, which is in the basement. It's a new room that they've just renovated. It's in sections B and C. Um, 
It is called the SX20 version. I've listed three other C versions there. These are all very similar telepresence units. Um, so don't be surprised if you go to a room and it says it's a C90, it's very similar to the SX20. It's small and portable. It can be moved around the room. So if you need to have it in the front of the classroom so that the entire class can be viewed, if you need to have it in a corner so that it's a very small group, you can set it up that way. Um, it has one camera that you can position how you need to. So the camera will be down when you start the telepresence. You could go in and position the camera how you need it to be positioned. It has a presentation display. So if you need to present a PowerPoint or your desktop, you can just connect to the VGA cable and you can show your presentation on the monitor. And then they all use, this one also uses a touchscreen control, which is very nice and it's very easy. It's a square uh, touchscreen like you would see small, probably a little bit bigger than an iPhone. And you just touch the different menu items. You can dial the number from that. You use that to connect your presentation. So the other option you have is the CTS 1300. And this series is located in Nord 516, which is a small conference room in the engineering department, in the Kelvin Smith Library, room 215, which you may recognize as the active collaboration room, and in Tomlinson 134. On the first floor, as you walk into Tomlinson, on the back side, there is a room there that has a telepresence unit in it. These telepresence units have three cameras. They have a 65-inch display, three microphones, so they are able to uh, host a lot larger group. They have lighting, they're wall mounted, so they are mounted on the wall, unlike the SX20 I mentioned where you could move it around. You can do presentations, but one feature is that you can do picture in picture. So you can have the people up there and you can move the picture around. If you want it to be in the center, then all of the participants will be on the bottom. If you want it to the left, to the right, depending on your presentation and where you want to have it up during the talk that you're doing. The touchscreen control is also there. This one has a little bit larger touchscreen control, um, so it has a few more features. It can auto switch cameras. I said it has three cameras. So if you have a large group and you can't all be necessarily seen in the main window on the camera, as you are speaking, the camera that's closest to you will switch when it hears your voice. And one thing too, there is a self view option in the SX20, which is the first one I talked about, there is a self view. So you can actually pull that up while you're talking and make sure that everybody can see you in the monitor. Whereas in the CTS 1300, there is no in call um, self view. So you can do that when you're getting started, but you won't be able to do that during your call. So there's one more Cisco uh, unit that I want to talk about. Uh, this one is located in the alumni house in the MSAS room 112 and in one of the ITS conference rooms. This has one camera, it has three microphones, so unlike the previous 1300 which had three cameras and three microphones, this has one camera and three microphones. It has a 37 inch display, it has backlighting, it does have the picture in picture display, which is very nice to use. It can be portable or mounted. The one that is in the alumni house is actually portable. Uh, so if you're gonna use that one, they would need to move it to the room that you need. Uh, the one that is in MSAS is mounted on a pedestal. They as well have the touchscreen control. There is no in-call self view, and this one you would need to position the camera as needed. So two of the units we have have one camera that you need to actually position um, how you want it to work and fix it where you need to have it. The CTS 1300 actually has three cameras that are mounted and permanent, so you don't need to position those cameras at all. So next, I'm gonna show you a video that we have created that explains 
how the telepresence works. It also will show you a lot of the things I have talked about. I talked about doing presentations. Uh, it will show you how to connect the cable for that. It will show you how the touch screen works, how to dial your number, and what it looks like if you're in a teleconference. So if you're not familiar with it at all, this is a good overview. This video is about the LL06 room in Kelvin Smith Library. So it's a demonstration of the XS, SX20. And also we will be doing two videos very similar on the 1300 and the 500, which I also talked about. So I will pause and we are going to show this short five minute video for you to watch. And then we'll come back and I'll finish talking about some best practices and some general information. And then we can take any questions that you may have. Um, and I can try to answer at the end of the presentation. Telepresence is a technology used for video conferencing that is so high quality, it feels like you are talking and interacting with others in the same room, even if they are at another location on campus or across the globe. It's useful for enhancing meetings that would normally be limited to phone conversations. It can also be used to conduct interviews and lectures and facilitate research collaboration sessions that would otherwise require costly and time-consuming travel. The unit I will show you today is one of several types that are offered across campus. This technology can host point-to-point -point calls where one telepresence unit directly calls another unit and multi-point calls where up to 20 video conference units can communicate at the same time. We are in room LL06 in the Calvin Smith Library. This room has the Cisco SX20 unit which is very similar to the C40, C60, and C90 units that are also found on campus. This system has a flat panel screen, touch panel, adjustable camera, and a VGA cord. Let's take a tour of the control screen you will use to make calls, take calls, and share presentations. This is the home screen. There are three buttons in this menu. The first button is the call button. This is the button you touch to make a call to a telepresence bridge or unit. The call screen has four tabs. Favorites, these are frequently used numbers that are set up by an administrator. Directory, a list of telepresence numbers for units and bridges on campus. History, a list of the last calls made from this unit. And keypad, where you can dial a number directly. To dial a number, type in the area code and seven digit number, then touch the ABC button and enter the at sign followed by the domain of the location you are calling. For example, to call another unit on campus, you would enter at case.edu and then touch the green call button. If you are receiving a call, touch accept to take the call. The presentation button allows you to share presentations on a laptop or other device. First, connect the VGA cable to your device. Touch the present button. The presentation display will show on the screen for everyone to see. When you are ready to stop your presentation, touch stop presenting. There are two more features that you may want to use with this type of telepresence unit. Since the telepresence camera is not mounted, you may want to use the self-view to see how you and the room will look to the other units participating in the video conference. Touch the self-view button. The camera's image appears on the screen. You might need to adjust the camera after seeing the self-view. Touch the camera icon and a list of presets for the camera will display. If there are no presets, or if you just want to manually adjust the camera, touch the camera controls to see the directional menu and adjust as necessary. Now I want to show you what it looks like to participate in a video conference. If I were only calling one other unit, I would call it directly, or the people using it could call my unit. Right now though, three units are attending my video conference. Any time that more than two units attend a video conference, each unit must dial the same telepresence bridge number. Bridge numbers look the same as the numbers for video conference units, 
but they can host up to 20 different units on a single call. Now that my video conference has begun, you can see that one unit is in the main section of the screen and other participants appear in a ribbon on the bottom. The main section automatically shows the person talking. The system waits about three and a half seconds to change the screen if another person starts talking. This helps avoid a display change due to small inadvertent noises. The ribbon along the bottom displays anyone who is not talking at the moment. If there are more than seven units on your video conference, the ribbon will show the last six people who have talked. This concludes the demonstration of the Cisco Telepresence Unit SX20. For more information, please visit our website at case.edu slash ITS slash videoconference. Welcome back. I hope that that was helpful to you. It was a good overview of how telepresence can work. Um, again, it showed the touchscreen panel. Uh, that one is actually called a Touch 8, which is a little bit smaller. I mentioned that the other two units have actually a little bigger one that's bigger. It's about a 12-inch size uh, panel because there's more options on it. Um, it also talked about connecting your computer and how that works. And you'll notice that in the center area, the person was always life-size, um, just like you're talking with them across the table. And in some of the earlier pictures where they showed people in different rooms around campus, you can tell that there were three or four people sitting in a room um, talking to another group of people. And so it was like they were across the room from you in, in full-size, life-size view. Um, that video actually will be posted on our website, which went live today, about video conferencing. We will also be doing, as I mentioned, two more videos for the other two units. So if you are near one or you have one of those other units, stay tuned. Uh, we will have those done shortly. So now you're asking, I know about telepresence, I understand video conferencing, all those little tips and how it works, but how do I request it? Or how do I go and get a room that has telepresence in it and get it requested and anything I need to do a teleconference? You can go to our website, which is case.edu slash ITS slash videoconference. And on the left-hand side, there will be a little blue menu. And from those options, to reserve a room with the telepresence unit, I mentioned quite a few rooms that have them in the presentation, you can contact the room owner. On that list, if you click on rooms, you're actually going to get a master list of all of the rooms on campus that have any kind of video conferencing units. In the list, if you look for any types that have the word telepresence, those are the rooms that will have the Cisco units that I spoke of. On the far right, in the last column, there will be a list of who to contact, the name and the phone number or contact information in order to reserve that room. So for example, if you wanted to use the Kelvin Smith Library, either 215 or LL06, you would contact the library to reserve the room. The next thing you can do is schedule your telepresence call. And to do that, there is a video conference request form that you can fill out that lets us know that you need to request a room. And what this will also help you do is we can give you a bridge number. You also noticed in the video we talked about a directory, and that will also list numbers. So if you're going to call from the LL06 room in the Kelvin Sys Library up to the 215 room, you can actually call between units. You would choose from LL06 that unit and it would dial the number from the directory. But if you're going to have a call where you need a bridge number set up so that all the participants from all around, so if it's something that is worldwide or countrywide, you can give them this one number and everyone will call in to the same number. It works very much the same as an audio bridge. If you have an audio meeting, you have one number, people call in, they put in the code. This one, you would just dial the phone number just like I did in the video, where you would have the number, the at sign, and then the domain. So in our example, it's case.edu. And lastly, if you do need further assistance, 
um, with setting up a telepresence room or a video conference, you can actually uh, look at the reference material that will be on that page. On the left hand side, there is a menu item that says reference material, or you can email help at case.edu and the service desk will contact us as well for assistance for you. <clears throat> Just some tips and tricks. There are a few things about telepresence that you wanna keep in mind. Um, like a telepresence call, you're actually going to need to go in the room, you're gonna to have to call a number, get connected, things like that. So as a best practice, you should actually arrive into the meeting about five minutes early. So if your meeting's at two o'clock, you should call in at five till just to make sure you've got the right number, it dials in, you get connected, you can actually see the other unit and the other people in the conference. Um, different from a meeting where everyone joins a room, everyone will still come in a little early, but if you start want to start the meeting on time, it's a good practice to try and dial in and make sure everything's okay about five minutes early. Another note is to look at the camera in a video conference. A lot of people don't realize that you actually need to look at the camera because uh, the users on the other side, if you're not looking at the camera and you're looking at them down in the ribbon area, for example, the person on the other side is going to see you looking down. So if you are talking in particular, make sure that you're talking to the camera and not to the picture of the person on the screen. Um, there is a three and a half second delay, uh, just so that you know, in particular, if you are using the rooms with the three cameras, that is where the camera will switch from person to person, and the same with using the singular camera. In the video, you notice that the person on the screen switched back and forth a couple of different times. You need to talk consistently for about three and a half minutes before it engages and switches to you, and the reason for that is so that they don't switch based on small things. If someone drops a pencil, if you tap on the table, shuffling papers, things like that don't cause the cameras to switch around rapidly. So keep that in mind. So if the camera doesn't feel like it's switching right away, uh, just keep talking. Be conscientious of your appearance. Um, unlike an audio bridge call or an audio meeting, be reminded that you are on a camera. So whether you're on your computer interacting or if you're in a telepresence room, everyone can see you. So keep that in mind um, of what you're doing. So if you're not speaking, uh, you may want to make sure that your microphone is actually on mute. So if you're not speaking and you're writing or shuffling through some notes, you probably want to make sure the microphones on mute so that other people aren't going to hear that noise. Um, sit close enough to the microphone so that you can be heard. Uh, some of the rooms have one microphone, but it's very small, like a small disc, and it actually has a long cord. So you can move it around a little bit, so you might want to position it so that everyone can be heard. The rooms with three microphones, you might want to position them too, depending on how large your group is, so that everyone can be heard if they're speaking. And lastly, just a little tip, everyone brings their cell phone, they put it on vibrate, but just keep in mind not to put it on the table if you're in a telepresence because the microphones can pick that up and if perchance it were to ring and it would vibrate longer than the three and a half seconds, it would actually cause the camera to switch to you even though you're not speaking. So just something to be aware of um, when you have your cell phone with you in a, me a telepresence meeting. So that's a quick tour of telepresence, a little bit of instruction, a little bit of explanation, some tips and tricks for you. As I said, we have a lot of good new information on our website at case.edu slash ITS slash video conference. Um, there are a lot of materials there. As I said, our video conferencing services encompasses some other products as well. So you may want to go there and see if those might suit your need. Today we wanted to talk about the Cisco telepresence units because more and more uh, rooms are starting to have those on campus and they're really a useful tool for meeting and utilizing committee meetings and groups of people and getting people together from across the globe. Lastly, again, our services are also help, uh, can be found at help.case.edu or you can email us at help at case.edu or give us a call at our service desk number, which is 216-368-HELP or 4357. 
This video will be recorded and it will be posted with all of the other ITS Connect videos on help.case.edu under training and videos. And you will see all of the videos we've done for the last year and a half to two years. We have quite a, a variety of learning opportunities there as well. So that's all I had today. So we have a few minutes left. If anyone has any questions, I can try to answer them. Again, the website's probably your best resource, but I can try to answer any questions. I have someone typing, so I'll see if the question comes up. Also today, afterwards, I will be sending out a survey uh, so that you can uh, let us know, give us some feedback. If there are any other ITS Connect sessions you would like to see that are um, overviews or quick trainings on products that ITS offers, please let us know and we can work that out. We're working on trying to get these scheduled a few months ahead so that we can publish them for you. Well, I don't see any questions, so I hope this was helpful, and have a great day. Thank you for attending.